Hello, everybody. Welcome to episode 43 of Press YYZ, your favorite Canadian gaming podcast. You can watch the show live on twitch.tv slash Press YYZ every Wednesday at 8 p.m. Eastern time or listen to it on your own time on podcast services like iTunes, Google Podcasts, Pocket Cast, Spotify. We appreciate however you choose to consume our content and the show, uh, including including this this is very important subscribing to tw- to us on twitch uh that that being the specifically the prime gaming uh, subscription that you get for free because you definitely have uh amazon prime and you should absolutely toss that thing our way you get a free prime gaming subscription when you do that uh if you don't have any actual money it's it's a good way to 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 help us out for sure uh regardless we're still going to be here we still enjoy doing what we do uh i'm your team leader for for tonight uh aj fraser and i am joined by alex ballant hello everybody what's going on uh what what is it play has no limits so it's time to power your dreams yeah that that's what it is uh behind the ones and twos we got alex cozina hey hey how's it going going great nathan mcinerney's here yo what's going on we've also got mr mitch george these are cool everybody hell yeah and if you may uh if you're watching the twitch stream you may have noticed another person is here uh someone uh very very new to to me especially uh i'm just gonna go ahead and introduce it you're you are taylor lyles Yes, I'm yeah. American. I have infiltrated this Canadian podcast. <laughs> Finally, we've, wait, we've nobody had... told me this. Yeah, we, <laughs> we, we, we've had we've had oh. non-Canadians on before, so it's not unheard of. Yeah, we've had a Brit. So yeah, here's the thing. I like poutine, so I'm like a, a spiritual Canadian, if, if for what it's worth. There we go. Love a good question. Now, now, what um, kind of cheese are you putting on that poutine? You got you got to get the actual cheese curds. Oh, they have some, like, yeah, because well, like there's a, there there's a Trader Joe's like pretty close to my house, and they sell like cheese curds in like a bag. So of course, like when I make it, I'm gonna go to Trader Joe's and buy the cheese curds. I gotta have the authentic experience. I've seen some people they get like a block of like mozzarella or something, and then they try to make cheese like knockoff cheese curds. I'm like, that mm. is fake. Don't do that. And just don't wrong. don't even make the poutine, man. <laughs> okay. Yeah, my, uh, that point? My high school used to use mozzarella cheese because it got nice and stringy, but it's just like, it's not the same thing. No. Nope. Not the same thing at all. Cheese. If you exactly. want the best poutine, you got to get the cheese curds from Quebec. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Can you confirm? I mean, yes, but I don't want to say that like any cheese curds that you can get from places other than Quebec are going to be automatically lesser than, you know what I mean? Like, I don't want anyone to think I mean, like, they, oh man, I because mean, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Uh, well, it's just like there's going to be someone out there that's going to make their poutine with, you know, fries and cheese curds and gravy from places other than Quebec. And they're going to feel like, oh, man, my poutine is lesser than. And I don't want and anyone to feel that, to way. feel that way. It's OK. So, t- Taylor, AJ <laughs> said he's new to you. Uh, for our yeah. audience, why don't you tell everyone who you are, what you do and why you're here? Yeah, so I'm Taylor Lyles. I am a journalist. Uh, I write for TheVerge.com. And what am I doing here? Well, uh, Alex <laughs> told me to, to to come on. We're going to talk about PS5. I have a PS5. What? Uh, I, figured, <laughs> yeah, I know, isn't it one? crazy? I did. I was, I was just as shocked as y'all are. Amazing. Yeah. The box. Yeah. Well. <laughs> no. <laughs> well, the funny Before, thing is, it's like yeah. my brother. Well, because like, so my my I have a twin brother, and Ooh. a month ago he said he didn't want a PS5. He didn't say he wanted an Xbox th- uh, Series X. He kept saying, "No, I don't want that stuff. I'm not going to have time for it. All this other stuff." Then last week, the day of the PS5's launch, he texts me and goes, "Hey, can you help me find a PS5?" I was like, "What happened to I don't want a PS5?" <laughs> <laughs> so I, he's having some serious FOMO and it was so weird because when he was telling me this too, that same, like in October, he was also watching the next gen 2k 21 trailer on loop. Cause that's all he plays. And I was like, I was like, but you don't want a PS five, right? He's like, no, I don't want a PS five. I'm not going to have time. And now here we are like roughly a month later, he wants me to help him get a PS five. So I'm in the process of having to battle the bots to help my brother get a PS five because my brother wants a PS five. And I'm a good, I'm a good sister. You are. Sounds like it. It yeah. Sounds like you're a very good sister that way. 
Anyway, before we get started into the uh, show proper, we just have uh, a couple things to mention here. Uh, one is, Cozy, you have an Apex Legend club? Uh, yes. So we talked about this last week. So w- yes, we apologize we uh, in advance if anyone is looking at this and is like, oh, man, why do you... This is really bear repeating. Yes, it does bear repeating. Uh, we have a club in Apex Legends. It's called Press YYZ. Uh, we will let you in once we receive your request to join it. Please do so because myself, Mitch, and Alex Ballant are going to be squatting up for some Apex fun a little bit later, but we will talk about that towards the end of the show. You call Wonderful. it fun. I call it. I don't know what I'm doing. That's uh, part of the fun. Speaking sure. of speaking of fun and not knowing what you're doing, um, one announcement that I have here is um, it, it, it's 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 kind of important, um, and I think we need to honor it in the the only way I know how, and that's to sing sing a very important song here. You ready? If you know the words, sing along with me at home. One, two, three. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Google Stadia. Happy birthday. (laughs) Jesus. Has it been a year? That's not making the noise I intended. Okay. I got my Google Stadia on its birthday. Uh, its birthday is actually tomorrow uh, at the time oh. of this recording. So I just uh, I just figured I'd share that important uh, m- moment with you all. Uh, I appreciate. We're here to talk about next gen, not failing technologies. Listen, listen. Stadia is ever evolving, and you do not need a, a, a physical heavy box. It hasn't right? changed right. in a year. It has, it has evolved. It has new ah. features. It has games from last year on it. As yes, brand so new. Does, it, is, it, is, it is getting uh, 2019 so game of the year. AJ, you have ten more seconds. Soon, maybe nine. <laughs> Eight. No, I'm I'm good. I'm Seven. good. I did right, I did my good. thing. I did my bit. As someone who has to cover Stadia, as I'm sorry. One of the oh. many things that I have to do for work. <laughs> I I look. I don't have Stadia. I. I keep telling myself I'm going to get, I'm going to try it. I feel like I should give it a fair shake, but it, it, you know, in the last few weeks in particular, I've seen it has, you know, had some pretty interesting updates. Like I forget what the, there was like one uh, feature that it it was like more like streaming centric where um, I'll have to, I'll have to like send it to you guys later at some point. Cause it's not that sure. important, but like, yeah. like it was like a, cr- it was like a crowd, like share feature or something where it's like, if you play like a certain game that supports the feature uh, you're like for Baldur's Gate, for instance, if you're playing the game and the people we are streaming it to a bunch of people and those people can decide like, Oh, this is what's going to happen. Like, we want you to pick this answer. I mean, of course you don't have to listen to them, but the fact that right. there's like a, a way that they're, a, you know, cause it's quite clear. Google wanted stadia to, to have more interactions with people who are going to stream on stadia. So I thought it was a pretty neat, neat feature. I, it kind of stinks that there's only like two games I can think of right now that actually use it. But it, you know, if they add more games to it, it'd be cool. Have you given it like a shot yet? Like to test it? You've tested the technology and everything, right? I mean, I tested it once because I had a friend. Okay. Yeah, I, I had a friend who who has it. I I wasn't. I played Destiny two on it, <laughs> mm-hmm. and I wasn't impressed. But it's not a. It's not like a bad. It's not a bad concept. I just feel it's. You know, it it, it, it had a rough launch in my opinion, but yeah. I feel like in the last year it's catching up and you know with all these other cloud services that are like coming out like geforce now and like all the you know, like x clouds I, I just feel that a lot of people are kind of sleeping on stadia right now because there's just I, I feel like there's a lot of potential in stadia uh mm-hmm. and i think it's just one of those things where it's like it'll get better over time so you know it's just one of those things i feel like in the next year i'll probably <laughs> get stadia at some point because it looks interesting i like the idea of like yeah. oh i can use a a clunker computer and play stadia and i don't it, you know like i think that's i, I think that's really hey. cool why it, it, you know it, what it is really cool yeah i mean i i like to make fun of it just because it's it's been a little bit of a a rougher launch for them but i did get in there when they released the immortals phoenix rising demo and i really enjoyed what my time with that and it's the, back now, so if you yeah, if you yeah. wanted a reason to hop into Stadia, that demo is totally free. All you need is a Google account and maybe a controller if you want that. But I'm you can just try plug it. in any old controller you want. It's worth it's worth a shot because I actually I really think, enjoyed my time with that. I think if you have YouTube Premium, you also they're giving away a free Stadia controller and Chromecast. So uh, till the twentieth. Till the twentieth. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's it, how I got mine. 
Yeah. Can you sign up for YouTube Premium now? No. no. And get now? No. no. Yeah. yeah. I have it as of the sixth. I don't know how oh, it was in like. Yeah, it was like November six. Like I know in the okay. US, it's like, oh, you had to be a like a member as of like November six. But if you had signed up after that, because I remember I wrote about it. I was like, I was like, okay, so if you're reading this now, don't think about trying to sign up and try to get your free <laughs> your free kit yeah. because you had to have been a subscriber as of like November six or before that. Because I was just, like, <laughs> yeah, it's a shame as somebody who collects, uh, you know, dead controllers because i have a steam controller i'd love to have the stadia controller i just don't want to pay for it <laughs> yeah. i'm sure it's going to go bargain bin at some point don't worry about hopefully it. yeah at one point probably should be a piece of history at some point although i believe yes. stadia is here for the long haul now that i have it so we'll see what happens. i hope so yeah i honestly yeah. do more more you were the only thing they needed nathan uh see that's uh, what i hear a lot actually yeah um all right man this turned so, into the stadia cast real quick yeah no, no so we're talk next gen you bring up the goddamn stadia <laughs> anniversary that was true next gen. Gen. yeah yep <laughs> we we've done it we've done it guys high five high five to me i guess all over. right yeah. <laughs> anyway uh playstation now how's that going anyway um let's get into the show proper um and yeah you know what the the ps5 is out and the the my fellow co-hosts are were were generous enough to let let me uh host two weeks in a row uh this time because i still do not have a ps5 but everybody else here has a ps5 yeah we do. Uh, so yes i'm gonna i'm gonna do my best and probably fail miserably at moderating the conversation because you guys uh do really well at talking to each other uh and i do very poorly at interrupting um but yeah um so to start things off i kind of wanted to get everybody's um just overall general just just give me a, a like a paragraph uh of words that that you can think of to to your feelings on the playstation 5 and I, i'm gonna go through each one of you, you so everybody us, gets a chance do you need us to mail it into you or do you want us yeah. to send you a google doc yeah no, you know what you, you can just uh, open stadia and stream it to me yeah, absolutely. Like, oh, I was going to say, on. do we want it to be double spaced or do we have to single space it? I want me to send it yes. to you in a fleet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, yeah. Uh, oh my Why god! Why is please. every fleet just a TikTok retweet? No, I've seen a bunch of, of pictures of Instagram and, stories of that. I, I, I and, like and Instagram. Like yeah. Like, Hold on a second. <laughs> Wait, what are we talking about? Yeah, I myself and Nathan are the <laughs> old. Twitter men introduced here. their variation of Instagram stories or TikToks or whatever you want to call it. Or Snapchat oh, stories. Yeah, my Twitter's yeah. Yeah. They called them the fleets. Yeah, yeah. Is that right. it. If you touch one of those bubbles, that's it'll it. uh yes. you'll see a video that'll disappear in twenty four hours. Oh, Don't worry, I I got your reference, Taylor. Thank you. Interesting. Anyway, to cool understand cool. that reference, I guess. Let's bring it. Let's bring it back to the PlayStation Five. Actually, this time. All right, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna go through everybody and and just give me a paragraph of words um, uh, verbally, if you would. Uh, Cozy, I'm gonna start with you. Uh, yeah. How do you feel about the PS Five? Uh, I so far am enjoying it quite a bit. I think across the board, all the games that I have played on the PlayStation Five have been of great to superb quality i think that the console itself in terms of uh, the ui and features that are currently available for it is good but i do think it does leave something to be desired i think that all the things uh in the playstation 5's ui that are like exactly the same as the playstation 4 or that just received very kind of moderate uh, upgrades are good. I think all the things in the PlayStation 5 that are completely unique to the PlayStation 5 are good. Anything, though, that was previously there on the PlayStation 4 or PlayStation 3 UI that was like upgraded or changed in a really substantial fashion, though, I generally don't like. And we'll mm. get, I'm, I'd imagine we'll get into those kind of naturally as yeah. we go around the room. Sure. Uh, Balant, let's hear about your experience okay so <clears throat> i as somebody who owns both the series x and ps5 and have been trying to divvy up my time between both of them as evenly as i can so that i can you know try and uh, have a really uh in-depth uh overview of both of them i'm loving the ps5 um i think it's i mean just aesthetically it is weird 
in a really interesting way. Like I, I like the way that it looks. Maybe not the size of it, but I think it looks cool. And just overall the experience, the, it really and truly like the the jump between the PS3 to the PS4 didn't feel as next gen as I feel like this jump from from the PS5 or from the PS4 to the PS5 is. I think this feels like next gen right out of the gate with both the SSD and the DualSense. And I'm just really excited that when developers have more time with it, what we're going to see from it. Hmm. Overall, very positive first impressions. Great. Taylor, let's hear from you. Yeah, so, you know, as I also got both consoles at launch, uh, I got the Xbox Series X, I got the PS5 with the disk drive, and, you know, I, I've i always been someone who doesn't have, like, a bias towards, like, any specific console or anything. Like, I have all the major consoles, I have a gaming PC, but, you know, if I had to say, in my opinion, which console did I think kind of is already off to a really strong start. I personally think it's the PlayStation 5. And, you know, even if we just pause for a second and just take a step back from the fact that, oh, well, they have blockbuster AAA exclusives right out the door that will sell a system or people are like, oh, no, this is why I want to buy the system. You also have to take a look at both of the controllers. Now, nothing's wrong with the Series X controller. I, I, I feel like it's a very, if it ain't broke, don't fix it kind of approach with some minor tweaks that enhance the Xbox One controller. I thought the Xbox One controller was a very nice controller. I think it's really comfortable. But, you know, I think the DualSense is an is actual next-gen controller. The haptic feedback features, the technology it has, uh, how it offers a lot more realism to the games uh if you know those developers took advantage of it i just feel it enhances and enriches the experience in just some ways that you know just a vibration to the controller just simply doesn't do anymore it's Mm -hmm. i feel that there is a lot of opportunity to add a lot more of that type of immersion and realism into our games aside from just making them look really really photorealistic on picture but actually have it kind of more like we're really feeling it we're really sensing it we're actually hearing and we're feeling and we're you know like things like that like i could go on for for two hours about why i love the dual sense controller i'm not going to do the that plan though. honestly but yeah. <laughs> but i mean I, I, i'll be honest i've played my ps5 a lot more than i played my series x i've only turned on my series x twice and one of it was to to update my my game because i wanted to update the master chief collection because it it recently got its next gen upgrade and then the other time i was playing an original xbox game on my on my xbox series x i wasn't playing like a a triple a title on it um Mm -hmm. or like one of the you know so i i feel that you know i feel both will have their own value and like i can still make a strong case of why you should buy the series x over the ps5 but i'm not here to do that i'm just gonna say you know it's just one of those things where you just really have to just kind of do your research figure out what you want in the long game and really kind of make that smart effective buying decision but me personally i think the ps5 is off to a good start i'm excited to see what else we'll get to do with the haptic haptic feedback controller i like what i've seen so far a lot of the games i've played i have enjoyed them i feel like Mm -hmm. i'm really getting a lot of my money's worth and you know that's just and that's something that i feel like we all should really worry about because let's be honest gaming is not a cheap hobby nope, nope. definitely is not now nope. the, um, the way it is <laughs> yeah especially right now mm-hmm. uh mitch how's avengers it it runs buttery smooth it loads up way faster but we're not here to talk about avengers we'll talk about it oh. next week because we've got the kate bishop news dropping tomorrow this okay. controller Everything Taylor said, I echo it 100%. I love this controller. This is now my favorite controller of all time. It feels so good in your hands. It just, it fits right. And the triggers and the haptics and everything really does change the game. I played a game for review that I don't, I don't like scary games. It was a scary game, but it made the act of opening doors novel. Like it felt good to open doors, which doesn't, it, we shouldn't be saying that about a game, but like honestly, opening doors felt cool, and opening doors has never felt cool in a video game. But what game I, was this it, specifically? It, so this was this was a, uh, a remaster of Observer, which is a game from mm. the Layers of Fear studio. It's like a cyberpunk police noir thriller. Um, it very cool. Uh, I enjoyed my time with it, even though it tried to scare the, the bejesus out of me. And Mm -hmm. it it has this thing in the triggers where if you try to open a door that's locked, it'll vibrate a certain way. And if you try to open a door that's unlocked, it stops at a certain point and you have to pull all the way through to actually like turn the doorknob and pull it. It 
it seems weird and it's probably gimmick game. We'll probably get over this stuff over the course of the first year, but just little touches like that are going to make games feel next gen. Whereas from a, a fidelity perspective, like these, these consoles are, you know, they're, they're Goliaths. This PS five is huge and it puts out a lot of heat, but honestly it, it isn't as much of a jump, like say going from the PS two to PS three generation where you got true HD, but what does feel next gen about this box is that controller. Amazing. Amazing. I've heard, I've heard it described as, uh, if, if the, the switch controllers had HD rumble, this is UHD rumble. So, you know, that's, we'll, that's we'll, pretty fair. Yeah. yeah. We'll, we'll definitely get into that at some point. I Nathan, do remember reading somewhere that the nope. haptics in the PS five dual sense were developed by the same company that developed HD rumble for Nintendo. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Nathan. Um, what's to say that hasn't been said at this point? Um, We've talked about the controller. I feel that's very transformative. Um, Like we'll talk about Astrobot. Mitch was talking about something he played for review. I'll talk about something I played for review on PS4, which I got a chance to just retouch in Dirt 5. I really enjoyed Dirt 5, but the haptics and the way the triggers worked while playing it on the PS5 version um, was amazing. Like when I was hitting cars, the triggers would react differently and you'd feel pushback on them. Hmm. um like it just it's a i i really hope third parties um really hope third parties adopt this and especially with some games like call of duty um for instance uh, doing different feedback on each and every different type of gun uh with those triggers i'm hoping we see more things like that and i'm wondering if that will be the difference on where you purchase it because of the experience you get with that controller um, yeah, if that's going to be that uh, talking point to people's heads, and then the SSD God games are fast. I be- backwards uh, played everybody's golf in backwards compatibility mode, and it of went for like did. five minutes. <laughs> it was like one of the first things I did. Um, mm-hmm. Put it on the SSD, and I was golfing in a minute and twenty three seconds. It would normally wow. take like three to four minutes to get to a golf course. And did then you, you try look Tony Hawk? you look at a game like miles where you're from the start screen to being in game in like less than a minute. Yeah. It's that, insane. That Absolutely SSD insane. is going to unilaterally change the way that games are developed. And I'm so excited to see how it's going to evolve when we get games that are purely made for just the PS five, because miles yeah. Morales is that cross gen game. And I can't wait to see what that, true ps5 experience is going to be like i'm very curious for ratchet as yes, it's gonna yeah. be the first ps5 i guess bloodborne or not Bloodborne. demon, um, demon souls, demon demon souls. souls is. <laughs> demon souls is as well but ratchet i'm, gonna it, be I'm going to boot it up but i haven't yet <laughs> yeah all those it's, it's fun baby. for what it's worth i mean it's it's definitely it, it definitely kicks my ass but i don't know i i it's such a di- that's a different conversation i don't know people keep saying like the souls games are hard and it's like i don't know if they're like i read something about how miyazaki had said he wasn't trying to make difficulty like the the selling point for these games but he was trying it was something about uh, like making them more realistic or something and i was like honestly that's a very grounded way of saying it because it's like you know if you start these games you feel very vulnerable and you're supposed to kind of feel vulnerable and it's mm. supposed to kick your ass and all that stuff so i like the idea of how it gives that challenge i think it's a fair challenge uh i know some people would like to disagree otherwise i really don't see that being like i don't know i I guess it's one of those things where it's like if you actually watch somebody play it and then you kind of see how they're playing it you and you take your time and it's just one of those things where it's like patience and kind of like the margin for error and just kind of like learning the patterns and things like that but in retrospect a lot of games are like that and you know i am glad that from software kind of brought back life into adding challenge into our games because i feel that just like that whole like way of just like kind of saying like well we just kind of want you to get through it as quickly as possible uh not really make you fight too much for it and it's like no 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 from software wants you to earn like the progress you make and that's very rewarding to me Mm. i uh Mm -hmm. i feel like this is a good kind of jumping off point to start talking about some of the software that we've experienced on the playstation 5. Uh, i want to ask you taylor go for it um do you like what exactly is your level of experience with the soulsborne games aside from the newest one so i 
actually, I, I had a friend who actually had the original Demon Souls, and I saw them playing it this one time, and I had to, I had to try it. And I was gonna buy it on my PS, on because I had a, a PS3 or used to have a PS3, and then I decided for some reason I didn't buy it. There was like a, a period in my life where I didn't play a whole lot of games. I was really right. focused on like sports and stuff. And then when I got back into it, I got Dark Souls on my PC, played Dark Souls, really liked it. I saw gameplay for Dark Souls 2, was not kind of big into it. And, you know, uh, I saw people play Bloodborne. I picked that up. I thought it was pretty interesting. Then I sold the game because I just didn't I just didn't have time to play it anymore. But, you know, I've dabbled a little bit in some of those Souls games. And, you know, if we're if we're being frank, I think that Demon Souls is one of the more interesting. I know a lot of people say Dark Souls is their favorite game or people who get into it. A lot of them usually say like it's like Dark Souls or something. But I think I like Demon Souls just a little bit more. I feel like there's a lot more. What's the word I'm looking for? I guess there's a lot. I I feel like there's just a lot more flexibility in how you can play the game versus the other Souls games. And I know they all are kind of very similar in like that approach of like, hey, you can hop into this. Uh, with like different class and stats and stuff like that but i i like the whole idea of just demon souls i like the music i like the atmosphere i think the enemies are really i don't know the enemies to me i felt were the best design i feel like someone's gonna kill me for saying that but this is my bit <laughs> so in, in terms of like you feel like demon souls sort of offers you the most freedom in terms of how you want to play it do you mean in terms of like the mechanics of like sword fighting do you mean in terms of like the customizability of your stats I would say in terms of just like your gameplay, because, you know, with the Dark Souls series, like, for example, it's open world, whereas like Demon's Souls has more like kind of like a kind of like a level select screen. In yeah. A sense. So with with Demon's Souls, like I know, obviously, if you if you know what you're doing in Demon's Souls, you can really go through those higher like it, you have freedom of which way you want to go. Like literally how many times have you like if you've seen people play Demon's Souls and it's like, hmm, I don't know which direction to go first. Oh, I'll go right. And then they fight all these skeleton, uh, these skeleton enemies that are way too high up level. And then they're like okay i guess maybe i'm not supposed to go here first and so i i feel that with demon souls i feel i don't know it's it, i feel that there's a, a level of just like create i don't know i feel like the bosses are a lot more creative i mean some of them are a little bit more pain in the ass like the man eater fight but we're not going to talk mm-hmm. about the man eater fight but i don't know like the tower knight i like the tower knight boss that's a really cool boss to fight the the dragon god well that was a little underwhelming in retrospect i i like the designs and just like the atmosphere i think the music is some of the best in the series i am glad that they remade this game to be quite honest because i i think the, the ps3 version still looks pretty good to be quite honest but you know if you're looking at we looked at the remake the remake looks really damn good i I have a question uh for you specifically about demon souls because we're kind of everyone who's played any from software game kind of there's a level of jankiness that's kind of just inherent to them does does the blue point remake have that same sort of level of jankiness like how one-to-one is this remake would you say like how does it feel compared to the original I'd say I, I feel it's pretty faithful to the original. I mean, obviously they made like, you know, a couple different enhancements and things like that. But, um, you know, I will say every kind of like the Souls game, I feel there's a lot of weight to your character where it's like, and you know, there's like things like the Stanima bar and things like that. I, you know, I think it's really interesting how, cause I don't know, like, again, I'm gonna go back to the point where it's like, it, it has that kind of like grounded feeling of like, cause I mean, I've never hold, held a sword before, but I would imagine swords are not like little light things I can just pick up with like a thumb or something. But you know, it's like, it's one of those things where it's like, again, like you, you have a lot of late and there's a weight to your character. It feels like they're heavy. In a sense, like mm-hmm. I, I know it sounds so weird, but I I, you, I I know you guys play enough games, so you probably know exactly what I'm talking about mm-hmm. when I say this. Yeah. And so it's it's kind of kind of it kind of reminds me of like Donut Drake <laughs> on charge, but not really yeah. Donut Drake. But like I, I keep thinking about like the weight, and it's like like cause, and when you look at the character, you kind of have this idea of like oh well, this character is gonna run like not like their actual weight or how much whatever they look like they weigh. But then you play a Souls game, you're like oh this character has a little bit of a little weight to it so i gotta actually mm. figure out how but i can't play this like like a beat-em-up or streets of rage or kingdom hearts i have to play this w- with some strategy i can't just like brute force and like smash the crap out of the melee button because that's not gonna get me very far 
In terms of jankiness, Alex, I would say that the only thing that really sort of screams jank when I play uh, the Demon Souls remake is, like, for example, some of the idle animations that enemy characters will have when you're not engaged with them in combat. Like the way that they kind of kind of lumber around or in most cases just sort of stand still. It, it, it kind of feels very kind of reminiscent of the era in which the game was made in perhaps okay. not that great a way. But I mean, it's, you know, the studio that was in charge of this remake just being faithful. And so I can't really criticize that. And I don't even feel now that I kind of talk through what I'm saying, I don't even know that it's totally fair to say that it's jank even. It's just it's an intentional, almost artistic choice that okay. is just very particular to the Soulsborne games. Yeah, it's it's a very much a, a souls born trait that it's like I don't know if I would say it's more of a criticism or just like you know you're playing a souls born game when and then that's one of the things where it's like yeah. that's how you know it's a souls born game. Mm-hmm. It's um you know it's interesting you Taylor talking about how you find yourself referring Demon Souls to Dark Souls because the way that I got into the Soulsborne series was through Dark Souls One I picked up a used copy of it in sort of in 2013 uh, initially gnashed my teeth a lot against it couldn't overcome it came back to it a few months later and I just sort of got through that initial hump and went on to play it extensively and loved it I also extensively played Dark Souls Two at platinum that as well i didn't love it as much as the first one but i do think that it's still a very good game and arguably underrated in a lot of ways i also played a fair bit of bloodborne but i talked about this on prior episodes of the podcast i reached a point in the game where i kind of lost interest and then kind of life overtook me i mean to come back to that game at some point but who knows when i will um going into demon souls i had this weird thing where having not seen what Demon Souls was like, having not played it, I always kind of felt like, well, why is it that people are so ravenous to go back to Demon Souls? Isn't that just like Dark Souls, but like not as focused, not as sort of well put together, like not as kind of clear in terms of the vision uh, of its design? And, you know, having played it for about five, six hours now, I, I definitely rescind that for the most part, I, there are certain aspects of um, Demon Souls design that I do think I'm less than uh, a fan of. I, I do think that at least what I've been shown of the story of Demon Souls thus far is a little bit underwhelming compared to the kind of vast amount of lore that was present in Dark Souls 1 and 2. And I, I do kind of have a few issues with some of the mechanics as particularly surrounding healing in the game. But I, I think that like there is the it, it, if Dark Souls in my mind is like a 10 out of 10, I feel like this game is like a 9.6 out of 10. Like the kind of difference in terms of quality between the two is not far at all, even though I do yeah. still place dark souls on a slightly higher pedestal i mean yeah and that's the thing is like with dark souls like it is a spiritual successor to demon souls and i it, to, i guess to piggyback with you on how the healing system works i think the estus flasks and just the estus system in dark souls one is the best out of any of the souls games in my opinion uh, mm-hmm. i just like the whole idea of it i i'm kind of surprised that it, this wasn't like a staple for all of like the other souls board games going forward but of course with the remake i wasn't really expecting them to do something like that because it's a remake not a, a reinterpretation of of demon souls but you know i i agree with you on something of those points i you know a lot of people think that dark souls was better than demon souls and you know everybody that's the great thing it's just like everybody has like their own reasons of why they think that uh the game which soulsborne game is the best and by the way i'm very i'm not i'm surprised to hear you say dark souls you really like dark souls too i know that that's such a it's a very kind of like mixed feeling game like i i know some people that personally think dark souls 2 is the best dark souls game and then there's a lot of people that are just kind of like it's okay so i'm kind of surprised to hear you say how much you like dark souls too i mean it's you know it's one of those things where like how do you start off how do you kind of follow up like a game that many people consider a masterpiece in dark souls one and it's like either you somehow manage to outdo it or you make a game that is in many ways just as great but because you're comparing it to this godly figure you know people are automatically gonna kind of turn their noses up at it that's fair. For for someone who's closest experience to a Soulsborne game is Jedi Fallen Order, and who plans on jumping into this, how badly is it going to kick my ass? 
It's going to kick your ass real fast. Cool. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. I'm not looking forward to this at all, but I have friends who are insistent on me playing it on stream and making fun of me for not as being good at it, so that's fine. As the tagline goes, you will die. Prepare to die, yeah. Yeah, yeah like yeah. literally, wasn't it the subtitle for the That was the PC the version. The oh, yeah, yeah, it was, yeah, it was the PC Prepare to die though. edition. I was like, like you yeah. know. <laughs> Great. Yeah. Yes, this, the, the Soulsborne games are going to kick your ass. And like, I feel like a lot of people try to go in this feeling saying like, oh no, I'm going to do it with like zero damage and like no, no, no deaths and all that stuff. I was like. Uh, you're pl don't go in there thinking like that because then you're gonna you're gonna end up rage quitting and you're just not gonna go back to the game like it's one of those things where it's like you really have to you know take your time and like yeah, yeah it's gonna piss you off you might you might break a controller you might contemplate breaking that the controller but it, with as much frustration as the souls games can give people when you actually get through whatever it was that was that you kept getting stuck on, then you feel a lot you feel a lot better. Like you yeah, feel like you just totally. won the lottery. Yeah, yeah exactly. So, <laughs> I really love this controller. I don't want to rage quit on the only one that I have. <laughs> so yeah. it was Why actually another one. Man? Oh, yeah, I was man. listening to a podcast uh, earlier this week. I think it was the Waypoint Radio podcast, and um, they they mentioned a, a story about somebody making their way like halfway through the through the game, like. I think the original one, they knew it was going to be hard because, you know, the legends tell a tale of a very difficult video game. Um, and so they, they just sort of fought their way through it. They got about halfway through it before somebody told them, you know, just ask the question, Hey, what level are you? And they had no idea that you could level up. So there, there's going to be some very basic things in, in that game that you're, you are going to, to miss for sure yeah for sure uh, w one piece of advice i will give you mitch before you try out demon souls is be very careful in terms of how many grasses you're using uh, earlier myself and taylor yeah. talked about the healing mechanics of this game in all the yeah. subsequent soulsborne games they basically introduce something like the ss flask where every time you rest at a bonfire the amount of restorative uses of the ss flask will replenish and you can go back out into the field and you can use it another seven times in this game you have a infinite amount of grasses that you can pick up that you can restore your health with but that means oh. that they don't restore whenever you go and save your game, which means that you can get yourself into a scenario where you're fighting the Tower Knight and you're like, oh, I'm slowly but surely figuring out how to take down this guy. Let me just keep healing myself up, healing myself up, using everything that else is in my inventory. And then you die and then you start from your last save point and you realize, oh, shit, I don't have any way of healing myself now, which is what happened to me once. Yeah. Yeah. So, the, like, when you go back to that last save point, it won't be with whatever gear you had at that point? You, like, you, you retain your gear and uh, a fair few you of your, your souls, items. You lose yeah. your souls, yes. You do lose your souls. But if you can go back to the place that you... And this is, like, pretty much for every Soulsborne game. Like, if you... I, I, yeah, yeah, like, if you... If you if you, you manage you to get back to the area... Run. Yeah, you have to go do a corpse run. So, if you manage to get back to the area where you originally died, or when you most recently died and you don't die again, then you can get those souls back. But obviously, okay. if you die at one place, and then you come back, and then you die at a different place, then whatever souls you had from that first death, they're they're gone they're forever. Gone. Yeah. And it's the worst feeling in the world when you have a whole bunch of souls, and you lose them all because you couldn't get back to them. Like, <laughs> I will say this, See, though. Like, all of this uh, is just stress-inducing for me just hearing it. I'm not looking forward to playing it, but I'm still going to do it because... I have to experience that one true next gen exclusive. I feel a Soulsborne game like I feel like with Soulsborne games like I feel like it doesn't matter it might be like I, it doesn't matter what Souls Soulsborne game you play. I feel like it's just one of those franchises where it's like you you should play it at least once in your lifetime to just yeah. kind of be like yeah, for sure. see what it's what, what it's about. Like what's yeah. up? Like I, like you hear yeah. people talk about it all the time like what's up with it? Like so I, that's how I feel about like it's just one I, I it's like if someone had to do some sort of like oh uh, a thousand games to play before you die. I feel like at least one of those Soulsborne games are, is going to be on the list at some point, or maybe all of them would be on there. I don't know. You can make a good case why any yeah. of the Soulsborne games are the if best one in the series. <laughs> yeah, if one of them vibes with you, probably the rest of them are going to. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, I will say this, uh, bitch. You should... Uh, I, I know a lot of people um, have said the royalty class is really good for beginners. Um, that is so good to should, know. 
Yeah, so uh, there was another one too, and I can't think about it. But I, I know that there's like there's like another class that everybody kind of says, no, you should you should play this class too. But I know the uh, from what I've seen in the community, and I know it's very like it can be a little divisive, and there's a lot of discourse for it. But from what I've seen, the general consensus seems to be royalty class is the class to for that's best for beginners. But obviously, you have your own freedom. You can choose whichever mm. class you want. But oh, a lot of people sure. are always yeah, a lot of people are always like the royalty class. I feel will give you a uh, it'll make it a lot of an easier experience for you to play. I've got a couple of friends that I feel are going to sherpa me through that experience, which I'm very appreciative of. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. Fair enough. Um, all right. Um, so I feel like, uh, unless anybody has any clo closing thoughts on demon souls, um, we've kind of exhausted demon souls at this point. Um, Yay. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. <laughs> you guys have. Uh, out. Yeah, absolutely. You guys have um, talked, uh, you know, a lot about the controller. So, I just want to. I'm just going to hard left turn uh, and pivot into specifically the the best tech demo that I think this generation is going to give us so far. And Nathan, uh, I'm going to start with you. How's Astro's Playroom? Uh, Astro's Playroom is a really good game that's free and with the playstation 5s uh no i had a lot of fun with astro's playroom there's a ton of love and care in that game and you can tell that the developers took time i think i counted like over 60 different playstation references that were hidden i'm sure there's probably more but it's just a fun unique romp through playstation history with a cute little astrobot um that has all the tendencies of the psvr um without being in vr um and it really, it's a um, like shows that controller off like no other game has done thus far, and what you can do. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. It fully utilizes everything with the Dual Sense to like its fullest capability. Where it like I don't want to be hyperbolic. And, like it feels like t describing playing that game is like you're being hyperbolic, yeah. but you're really not. It is a transcended experience. It really yeah. is like you feel everything the environments mm -hmm. like every single action you take it's you genuinely feel it and a way that i just don't think has ever been done before in a game like even like with the switch which is with its hd rumble like i feel like this is like this is like a way bigger step than that even yeah hmm. yeah I mean, the like going back to just the dual sense for like real like really quickly, like uh, this is like probably one of the more innovative pieces of technology I've seen if we're not speaking like standalone virtual reality oculus quest headsets, in my opinion, I feel that uh, like because before I thought the switch was the most innovative piece of hardware for the eighth generation of gaming, and then like this current generation like uh, like with the series x and the the p s five the dual sense is literally the most innovative thing that's coming out of here like that the, the controller is next gen <laughs> and even like just comparing it with the series x controller like it, like it's 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 not even fair to compare like there's just so much you get and like I, i've seen so many people talk before like i saw somebody do a review a next gen review of nba 2k21 and they were like literally i think the the ps5 version is the definitive way to play 2k like just because of the haptic feedback technologies and just all this stuff like i know like i feel like it push comes to stuff i feel like the one of the biggest things that i feel people are going to try to debate about is wh like which console version would be better if it's being set to both xbox and playstation consoles yeah and i feel it's i feel what it's mostly going to come down to uh, aside from maybe maybe hardware like the ssd space which i know is like a, a, a problem that's probably going to main i feel like it's going to be a problem within the first year of both the consoles lifespan but i feel like it's also going to come down Absolutely. to how does this developer utilize the dual sense controller and does it utilize it enough to, that it makes it this uh, a completely different experience that I, I just can't get on a pc or an xbox yeah yeah i think if if uh, cross play becomes more ubiquitous, and I think it, we're starting to see that, uh, I think if third party developers do start taking advantage of the features of the controller, it's a no brainer where you want to play these games. Yeah, it was weird. Part of the reason why I got my Series X because I was like, I'm going to play all my third party games on that because the Series X, like spec wise, is more powerful than the PS5. It's not a huge margin, but it's powerful. It's just enough that it's like, you know what? I'm going to justify it along with like all the other reasons by the Series X. But that was my biggest thing was all third party games I was going to play on that. I am now really questioning that line of thinking because of just how 
like I'm really sad that I bought Call of Duty on my yeah. Xbox. I was gonna ask. I've heard so many people say that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like hearing hearing um, hearing people talk about Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War on the PlayStation Five, and just the way that every gun feels completely different in a way that just it's like not just the sounds of them and not just what they do, but just how they feel in your hand. It really made me. It has made me question: Where am I going to start buying these third-party games now? Let's be real. You're really questioning uh, what Halo guns would feel like with that controller. Oh, absolutely. Imagine. No, that's, I'm thinking that too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, man, they the, are, the they are using P- PC battle. driver support for the DualSense, including full yeah. haptic support, it's right? True. So yeah. there's a potential oh. that PC games could support it as well. I don't see it happening in anything Microsoft makes, but you never yeah. know. Maybe the PC version of Call of Duty introduces this stuff as well because... If it's already in the code, all you got to do is, I don't know, enable it for those. I know it's more complex than that, but like, I mean, maybe it is as much as just saying, as long as it's not Xbox, you can turn these switches on or you can sense yeah. the controller type and do it based on that. But I kind of, I have not played a Call of Duty mainline game in like four years. Oh, I yeah, kind of want to get cold because of what they're saying about Cold the too. <laughs> yeah. but that, that that file size is intimidating for oh yeah thing. yeah and, yeah yeah like, yep. it just like that's and part I, of the I, reason why i'm glad i bought it on my xbox actually is because it's not gonna take hard drive on day one or it's was that taking, just me was it yeah. me i think it was no, no i only have like uh no i, I haven't I, I barely touched it like i don't know how to think oh. like yeah, I, I'm I, I've installed three game, like three games on it so far. Well, I uninstalled one because I got mm. I got the platinum in Bug Snacks like a couple days after Ooh, I installed hell it. But yeah. I got I I platinumed Bug Snacks and then I uninstalled it because I was like, if I if I keep it on, I'm just gonna keep constantly having to speed run the game. And I was like, I have done everything this game needs me to do. I don't see the point in going back and playing it. <laughs> Uh, Honestly, side note, I should do that. I should deal with Miles right now. Yeah. Yeah. Seriously. No. Seriously. Yeah. Everybody who has a PS5, go download Bug Snacks. It is free. There's literally no excuse why you shouldn't go play this game. Like it, it's it is free, free for two months, right? It's yeah, free it's like free for like, half, like yeah. January something. Yeah. yeah, like January something. And I'm like, I'm like, it's a free game. You're not losing a whole lot, except maybe like I think it was like what three gigabytes. Uh, like it's yeah. not even a big file size. I'm like, you're not losing a whole lot, except maybe yeah. a little bit of your SSD space. And it, it, the, ch- the chance of it taking that much is very, very slim. Anyways, so yeah. just go play it. It's a goofy game. I, I, I like it. I think we need. I don't know. I'm, I'm very much the the advocate for for fun goofy stupid games i i, I think oh, we need yeah. more of those games like you know so we, we don't need to have so many high stakes games and stuff like that and i feel like anybody who's played bug stacks will know the story i'm not going to spoil the story but it, it's, it's, it's it's a silly goofy game i i love all the bug snacks i love that when you when you pet a bug snacks it will it like the sound will go through the dual sense controller i think that's like the coolest little thing <laughs> Like as soon as I saw as soon as I saw that trailer on like that place like that PlayStation Dragon, I was like, I gotta play this game. <laughs> I was well, like, actually, I need to play this game. <laughs> so Loki Mike in the Mike, Loki Mike in the chat, who's actually one of those Dark Souls guys that's gonna help me out with Demon Souls, he brings up a good point of we're also gonna get another first party Sony title available to us on PlayStation Plus in February in the form of Destruction All Stars. Yes. Mm. Knowing what this controller feels like with the games we have now, what Sony might do with that controller it might honestly be pretty cool. Yeah. It actually has me slightly interested in that game more so than I probably was beforehand. Just I feel like now everything, I just want to tr- at least try it just to see what it feels like. Because I feel like every game yeah. just is just improved just that much more because of just everything that the dual sense is pr- uh, going to offer. Mm-hmm. So just for reference, I did so I did fill my hard drive, but that's because I put games on here that I just wanted to see how they play on the PS5, or it's games I haven't gotten to that are on my backlog that I need to get to, like The Witcher Three, which mm-hmm. I've never played. Ooh, you uh, play but, it. Yeah, I've got that a Jackbox <laughs> game, <laughs> Bug Snacks, Ober Din, also another backlog game, Watch Dogs Legion, which I wanted to see how it compares next gen versus previous gen avengers obviously you guys know me i'm an advocate for a game that was dead on arrival and they haven't really helped since uh ghost of tsushima apex because cozy's convinced me we have to play apex yes. uh, demon souls <laughs> days gone the crash trilogy fuser which oh my god how good is fuser i continue to say that <laughs> everyone should play that game and the spider-man remaster i just deleted miles because i got the platinum 
Wow. Yeah, I I um at this point I think the last time I checked I have like sixty five gigs left. So like I have, room I have for one more game twice one hundred and twenty. So I've got room for maybe like a big game and a half a big game. I think yeah. I have three hundred yeah. left. Yeah, I downloaded a I downloaded a lot of PS4 games specifically yeah. for the reason to like just see how they play. Like I downloaded God of War, Uncharted 4, like all of like the technical powerhouse ones, Last of Us Part Two. Um, all of the games they've set are enhanced for PS5, yeah. basically. Which yeah, is I'm really also, the only reason I downloaded Days Gone. Yeah, I'm also really excited to to because I know the Last of Us Part Two and God of War both got Dual Sense updates as well. So yeah. like the games are enhanced for the Dual Sense. So. I'm very Ooh. excited to see, mm, especially can... God of oh, War. God already, of War with throwing God, the axe. Yeah, God yeah. of War already so yeah. good. There are, there are some moments in The Last of Us that I can just imagine, like being able to feel it more, might <laughs> might be a little unsettling. I wonder if you could feel the sense of vertigo because that would honestly be a technical achievement. Because they already oh, did so yeah. much with depth of field with the and vertigo just, effect yeah. for Abby. If they could do something with the dual sense there, who? Yeah. I feel. I feel like in order for, for to feel vertigo, you would need to be in VR. Oh yeah, I felt it once or twice playing Iron Man, but we won't talk about that. No. <laughs> Iron anyway. Man was pretty solid for Down sickness wise, but uh, it's fine. Fair enough. Can we go back to Astro's playroom for a sec? Yes, sure. go for it. All right. Um, <laughs> you know, when I was playing this game for the first time. I kind of remarked, like, man, every single console launch should have an Astro's Playroom of some sort. And then I remembered that with the Wii U, we actually got Nintendo Land, which... So, first off, did everybody here get a chance to experience or at least try out Nintendo Land? No, yeah. my Wii U didn't come with it. and I, I was later it. to the Wii U, and it came yeah. with new Super Mario Brothers U plus mm. Luigi U. Or I was like every other person on the planet and didn't buy a Wii U. I bought right. a Wii U, so there's one person <laughs> I, you're not like. I was, yeah, I was gonna buy a Wii, Wii U, U like it was all yeah, four. See, yeah. <laughs> Oh, I, I, I was gonna buy well I was gonna buy a Wii U originally, but Nintendo did such a bad job marking it marketing it that when I saw it, I couldn't tell if it was just uh another version of the Wii or if they were just trying to sell me this big ass gamepad with the Wii. I didn't know what it was. Like I thought the market the marketing was just right. kind of like and I didn't feel the need to do a whole lot of digging into it. Yeah. And by the time when I was interested in getting a Wii U, I was like, okay, what? Well, there's no point in getting one now. <laughs> so there is one point, and that point is the fact that all of the Mega Man Battle Network games are available on that system's virtual. That's console. true. There's a lot of good. And the fact virtual that the Twilight games. and uh, Wind Waker HD are on the Wii U still. Yeah, yeah. yeah. both need to come to Switch. Just, yeah. just so does uh, Battle Network. Waker. Anyways, give me a Battle Network connection, Capcom. You cowards. We'll, we'll see about that one. Um. Anyways, so like the thing about Nintendo Land is it had kind of a similar vibe of it's this big sort of celebration of all of Nintendo's past franchises, both active and inactive. There is a big hub world in Nintendo Land where you could actually collect like little dioramas or toyetic versions of prior Nintendo characters and objects. But ultimately, like reflecting back on that game, I just felt like that game was definitely way more gimmick first and gameplay second whereas astro's playroom feels way more gameplay first and gimmick second and i think that it succeeds a lot more as a result of that imo yeah yeah the one thing yeah. i'll say is the the part where you have to use the microphone uh, not good yeah yeah i i yeah. Just, it felt so out of place like i mean we've seen this with the, I, I don't know it, it gave me some very strong nintendo ds vibes and i was just yeah. like I don't oh yeah, care about yeah. See, so i was like look this isn't this isn't groundbreaking i mean is it cool the dual sense has it yes it's cool that there's a built-in mic that i can blow into it, it like cool? the big bad wolf but do i find that cool when i think of all the other stuff that dual sense does no what, i do not what, i find what, it underwhelming <laughs> what's cooler than that is the fact that if you disable the microphone it just does all that stuff for you <laughs> Automatically, and I really appreciated that. Oh, Wait, yeah. seriously? I didn't yeah, know that. If you had the mic yeah. turned off, it just did it, which I was like, yeah. oh, thank Christ. I, huh. I was, I, um, oh, go ahead. Oh, I was talking to one of my friends online through the party chat, and then I came up to one of those microphone things, and I felt really bad because I'm like trying to blow into the mic, and I think he's hearing <laughs> it on his end. So he's like, what are you doing? And I'm like, I need to blow into the mic for a second, be quiet, because I think you're interrupting it coming through. <laughs> See, the thing yeah, about I the mic like, stuff, 
sorry, I just want to say quickly that, you know, yeah. the thing about the mic stuff is that, yeah, it's a little annoying. It kind of disrupts the flow of whatever it is that you're currently doing, but at least it's very straightforward of you just got to keep blowing in and that's all there is to it. Nintendo Land, like, again, to go back to that comparison, I feel it had a whole lot of things of like, all right, now you have to hold the Wii U gamepad and we're really going to test out your ability to hold it precisely and uh, rotate its accelerometer to like the nth degree yeah. of uh like finesse basically and i feel like this game definitely does not have sharp edges like that it is decidedly very easy and i think that it needed to be very easy to be as good as it is yeah so i, I think sorry go ahead i like quick question with astrobot um as this is a pl- packing game as we all remember we sports is the like number one of the number one selling games of all time because it was a packing game it was a very Astro- good game it was yes, also it, a very good game. It, it, it won. Game. It was the best game or the best launch game. No, it was up there for best launch games when we did our list of best launch games. Yeah, yeah, it was yeah. Like three or four. It's not three, um, I think. Yeah, but where does Astrobot sell as many copies as we sports? Do they Common. continue to keep it bundled in? I don't see it why not. If Sony- it depends if Sony continues to have it packed in on later iterations of the PS5. I don't see why they wouldn't, but hard does, it kinda... have a, does it have a store page? Why? If it doesn't point. have a store page, then they're not going to release a paid version of it. That's Do we know? We don't. We don't know for certain whether this is free software, which means free in perpetuity, whether or not it's pre-installed or not, or if it's a pack-in title, similarly to Nintendo Land or Wii Sports, because eventually we did see that Wii Sports came out of that bundle and they sold Wii Sports Resort and all that stuff. And eventually Nintendo Land was no longer bundled in with Wii U. So, so Astro's Playroom does have a page. Yeah. yeah. I wonder if it. someone could data mine a price out of that. Because if it's just a free download, I can't see them introducing a price to that. Because yeah. I, I can see them maybe doing it if they if they expanded upon it. But I was like, I don't know how they can really expand upon this without making it a, a sequel, to be honest. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I think well, the sequel is next in this style. Yeah, mm. My, honestly, I'd save it for PSVR two. I see. I'd rather see them not do a PSVR title. Just do a straight up platformer with Astro. Because I don't want them making a new so PSVR fun. until they can make updated move controllers. Because let's be honest, the PlayStation move controllers were not made for VR. They just yeah. they simply weren't. They came out before the PlayStation VR. They obviously don't have the design were, and the feel to make it VR. They yeah, were in the PS3 section of Astro's Playroom, for goodness sakes. Yeah, the, like... the move controllers were sitting, rotting in a warehouse somewhere, and they decided, hey, let's bundle this in with the VR and do something with this. We already spent the money, so... And in all fairness, I do want to give those controllers credit, because uh, they lasted 10-plus years, and you can still hook... They've gone from the PS3 to the PS4 to the PS5, and they're still being used. Have they really gone to the PS5, though? Yes, because I yeah, have they though. For my PSVR. But, 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 yeah, I, but I just, I'm just saying, I wouldn't be surprised if the PlayStation Move wasn't in as many VR, in PlayStation VR games, and they focused more on the DualSense, just because of what the DualSense could do compared to the PlayStation Move. I think the other thing too that I did mention earlier, we kind of we kind of skipped over, is you cannot download every PS4 game onto the PS5. I cannot download what is arguably Sony's largest VR title from 2020. Which is Spider or uh, Iron Man VR? It will not download to my PS5. That's insane. What? That's a problem. Mm. Why? It just says it's not compatible. Speaking of things that have a hard time downloading to the PS5, um, I've heard something going on about how it would be nice if there was some sort of delivery service that was smart and could smartly deliver the correct version of a game to. The console somehow uh, th- i've heard some rumblings that i don't know maybe smart deliveries on to something what, what, I have how, not what have any you, issues. you have not I seen any issues? any issues i haven't had any issues. i've heard issues but i've not experienced anything myself on no. the day that i got my playstation 5 one of the first games i played was a rainbow six siege and i was concerned for a moment that I had downloaded the wrong version of the game, uh, but I quickly learned that, in fact, they had not released the PlayStation 5 version of the game yet. So the Mm. only version that had downloaded the PlayStation 4 version was technically the correct version. 
Yeah, the like I know one. some people have been saying, like I know some people have been kind of concerned, or, like things like that. Like I know I saw a Eurogamer article that said that some people were actually playing the PS4 version of Black Ops Cold War, not the PS5 version. But I know some of these games that said they were going to have free upgrades, they're not available yet. Like with Madden, for instance, Madden 21, the next gen upgrades aren't going to be available till December 4th. And with Control, yeah. I don't even think the upgrades are available yet. I'm not sure. I'm not really. I kind of just like emotionally checked out with Control because, like, they. Are, did they just messed up the whole next gen upgrade thing and they yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, we ain't gonna talk about that i don't want to talk about that but <laughs> we um, started at length trust me yeah yep. so but, but you know so but i know with some of these games like i know some are going to have like the free next gen upgrades but i don't think all of them were available at launch to my best knowledge i don't know i wrote a whole long very big article about it i don't have it in front of me but i, I spent way too much time on that <laughs> on it but it was it was it was totally worth it because i i had a lot of people say hey thanks for writing that that was actually very helpful i was like oh no problem but <laughs> but you know i feel like with uh, i don't know i feel like with just like the whole smart delivery thing i'm glad that a lot of these companies are offering these like uh, games for like free upgrades not all of them i mean 2k certainly was not doing <laughs> for 2k like 21 and honestly they really should because i don't even think even though the ps5 version is really good of 2k 21 i don't think it is worth 70 dollars. It's, it's just not it's simply not worth 70 dollars. but um like you know i i like the idea of like they're saying like hey we're gonna offer these like i think that's really nice because it's like i don't remember this ever happening before i don't think it ever has happened before and um i don't i i i think it's i think it's a, a good way to kind of help like people kind of ease into a next generation console a little bit more versus just like the previous generation and i'm curious to see specifically how long this will keep going because eventually at some point the xbox one the ps4 they're going to be i guess considered obsolete in a sense so i'm just curious mm -hmm. to know how long this is going to keep going and i know some some places were like like i think with like cyberpunk you can get a next gen you'll get a next gen copy if you buy the current gen version or whatever yeah. but i'm curious to see like because i like with ea for instance they're like yes you can get a free copy of men nhl and fifa until whenever those their subsequent sequels come out and i'm like i are other places gonna do that i could i wouldn't be surprised if it happened but i'm curious to see how that will keep going moving forward but i also feel like some people like some companies might do i guess remasters in a sense to try to take full advantage of that hardware so i feel like some of them might not necessarily do a free upgrade it's just more like a more i guess definitive version of whatever it was they previously released or something so i don't know i'm curious to see how this will happen and i feel like the next year is just going to be very interesting in terms of like free upgrades in terms of remasters compilations all that yeah, and I think there's no real stand. I mean, at least with regards to what I've seen come out with the PS5 and people playing like the last gen version of of Cold War. I kind of ran into this as well when I was downloading my copy of Watch Dogs because I bought Watch Dogs on the PS4, played a little bit of it, didn't really jive with it in any reasonable way, and I want to try to get back into it on the PS5. But I had to click through on the store page from the PS4 version, which had a download button next to it. There was another option to the side, which is like free next gen upgrade. And I clicked that. And then that's and that ended up being what got downloaded. And it seems like there's some things that are just hidden in like the options menu of, oh, if it shows a little PS4 lo icon, then you're playing the PS4 game, not the PS5 game. You have to like click option, click PS5, go to that store page, redeem it. It's it seems more convoluted than any, than it ultimately needs to be. And hopefully, to Taylor's point, it's not something we really have to deal with for all that long because eventually those consoles will be sunset. Hopefully. Yeah. At some point, there's so many of them out there. Yeah. I feel like it's going to be a developer-by-developer developer basis because, like, mm. what? It was uh, 2015, they were still releasing Call of Duty on Xbox 360 and PS3. Well, like, like uh, dance FIFA was Wii Wii up to yeah. Like, yeah, FIFA, FIFA was, like, was going on forever on the yeah. PS3 and the PS2. So, so it probably is going to depend on the game, depend on the developer. Um, but hopefully, hopefully, we're going to start seeing some of like the really big ones and the really big games start to start to make that shift. I feel I like it's not going to be. Yeah. yeah, no, I just, yeah, just agree with you. I wouldn't be surprised if like the next like this next year, a lot of this stuff's going to be a lot of it, not all of it, but a lot of it would be cross gen stuff. Just because, especially now, it, it, everyone is having such a hard time getting these damn consoles that I feel like I guess 
in my opinion, logically, it makes sense to just make it cross gen for the next year until mm-hmm. there's enough of a of a fan base saying we've already switched over, and then there's enough comfort level of going, okay, you know what, we don't have to keep releasing these on both of the on both like of these sibling consoles. Like we can just go straight to next gen and just keep going from there. I could see three years of it potentially. Yeah, yeah. That's what Sony yeah. has said is that they would support the PS4 for three years after launch. Yeah, they have already announced Horizon Zero Dawn for next year, which we know is not not Zero Dawn Forbidden oh, West. Uh, Forbidden West. Forbidden West. Yeah. Yes, for next year, and like like let's assume a hypothetical scenario where that game gets delayed to 2022, then that's at least two years where all right, well we know that we're still going to be getting playstation 4 and playstation 5 games pretty concurrently i'd say that yeah three years seems appropriate but i I think that the playstation 4 is gonna have a long tail Mm -hmm. and there are also rumors now of god of war's sequel coming to both the ps4 and ps5 and with what we've seen of games that have come out at the launch of the ps5 like miles that are cross-gen i couldn't touch the ps4 version with a hundred foot pole at this point and we've heard the rumblings about cyberpunk that it is the current or at least now the last gen version that is slowing their ability to deliver that product. So if that's the case, the sooner we can see these companies say, okay, we have to put a a foot in the sand and say, no, this is the line. And anything past this line is only going to come to next gen. I think we're all going to be better off for it in terms of the experiences we get to play. Can I talk about Spider-Man yet? Oh, no, I suppose you can. Spider-Man on the show. What? (laughs) I feel like it's going to be here to talk about (laughs) Spider-Man. I just, I feel like you know I I I wouldn't be surprised if God of War was on PlayStation Four and PS Five if if it came out in the first half of of like of next year I could it, I I feel that's really more realistic in my opinion I don't I can't, I can't I, I guess I could make an argument that you could see it on PS Four like around this time next year but I don't know if I I don't know I just feel like I don't know if I, I it just wouldn't surprise it would it would make me. A little bit dumbfounded if that happened but you know i feel like it'll be one of those instances where it's like they're gonna release it on both consoles but clearly there's one version that i don't want to say they put more love to but i guess you could say is a more definitive way of playing it kind of like with Mm -hmm. the breath of the wild situation where they released it on wii u but they also released it on switch and uh, the wii u version has its problems and i'm not saying that's what god of war would be on ps4 i'm just saying like i feel like it's gonna be one of those things where it's like they're going to try to maximize how many people can read like how much of their audience can play this game excessively like how much like the level of accessibility and things like that and you know if, mm-hmm. if it came out like in the like any time between january of next year or, or like june or even july of next year i could see them saying you know what we're gonna put it on both of these consoles so that everybody has a chance to play it because like if if these supply issues continue especially in the first yeah. half of next year there's just yep. gonna be a lot of people that are gonna be pissed off that they won't be able to play god of war on the ps5 because they don't have a one yet so mm-hmm. totally fair yeah yep. totally fair all right, I guess I'll let you talk about Spider-Man now. Go for it's it. So good. Oh. It's so good. So I got the platinum in it. What day are we at? I don't know. Earlier this week. <laughs> it's Wednesday. Uh, so that was probably... It's Wednesday, yeah. my dudes. The day yeah. that we always record Press YYZ on and that you shouldn't forget about. I'm not forgetting Wednesdays. I'm just forgetting the last time I streamed because I sat there for four and a half hours. I think it was Sunday or Saturday. I don't remember. It doesn't matter. For it started with half, yeah, it start, It ended in Y. Uh, I sat down and played from start to finish New Game Plus in Spider-Man Miles Morales to get the last trophies I needed for the Platinum. And oh my God, is that game hit hard. Anyone yeah. who can needs to play that game. PS4, yes. PS5, does not matter. If you can get it on the PS5, great, because that's where it plays best. Um, the story hits in a way that only... In, like Somehow Insomniac is making better superhero stories than Marvel. And that is something that I would not have expected. Is that a dig at adventures? Uh, no, it's more of a dig at like Square Hulk. Enix. It's Square, absolutely. Um, no, I, Insomniac just has a really good way of telling stories yeah. in their games, and it it adds it it really applies itself well to the Spider-Man formula. I think Miles is a great character. The representation we see in the game of of Harlem and of you know, it's 
There's just all uh, a bunch nice of different little... areas that they don't you don't really see. Yeah, just like yeah. a bunch of different areas you don't normally see taking center stage in games. Yeah. Like they do a pretty right. good job of accurately portraying it. Yeah, I do. I do find it odd how they kind of skirt around the fact that he's like they don't really touch a lot on the fact that like the police have a presence. And like his, I understand like his dad was a cop and there is a black lives matter mural and there is a suit that is tied to, you know, Harlem pride, but it does seem a little like skirting around some major issues that I think they could have dug into with this year being what it has been. Yeah. Um, but that being said, I think the story they tell is really good. I think it's very grounded in miles and him being a friendly neighborhood Spider-Man when the OG Spider-Man is nowhere to be seen. Yeah. And I, it, it, yeah. Sorry, go ahead. Yep. Oh no, go go finish your thought. Uh I I think it's wonderful. I think honestly, I was a little disappointed going from Astro and getting that platinum to going to Miles. Because I felt like they weren't using the controller to the same extent that uh Japan Studio did with Astro. Mm -hmm. And then I started having to trick my brain into reuse relearning how to use triggers in a game by not squeezing all the way and feeling the nuance that they put into the thwips and the webs and the falling and the combat. And it's just, it's so satisfying flying yeah. around. Like I could not go back to like, I think I, I never got new game plus done in the OG Spider-Man 2018. So I'm sitting at like 98% completion on that trophy list. I can never go back. I cannot go back to that game. I will play it on the PS five. Cause my God, these games look so goddamn good on the PS five. Yeah. I played through the first run of Miles in fidelity mode, which is, you know, 4K, ray tracing, the whole kit caboodle. And then I flipped over to performance mode for my new game plus run. Do so you have a 4K I, TV? I can't go back. Sorry? Do you have a 4K TV? I do have a 4K TV. When I'm streaming, I'm doing that on a 1080p display. So when I played, I played through all of Miles on fidelity on the 4K TV. It looked phenomenal. And then I switched to performance mode and I can't go back. Yeah, so I'm I'm in that same boat. There's no way in hell I can ever play Marvel Spider-Man on PS4 because I... So Miles Morales was the first game I played on PS5 and I immediately switched it to performance mode because 60 frames is phenomenal. It is like, it is the definitive way... It's a way. game changer. Yeah, like, like it is it is more of a game changer than 4K because 60 frames, especially with a game like that where it's you are going so fast you're speeding through the city you're swinging around having the frame rate feel like it matches that is it's it's phenomenal it i have a very soft spot for both into the spider-verse and marvel spider-man mm. and this game really hits on all of the emotions that, that both of those games deliver on and i in some ways, I think Miles Morales is a better game than Marvel Spider-Man. I think I like the the narrative. I think I relate more to Peter Parker than I do Miles Morales, just kind of naturally, just um, with my own upbringing. But I still think that it's such a close-to-home story Miles Morales uh, offers, and it really is like this heartwarming, very in some ways more personal. One of the things I really love about Spider-Man is the and this was very much a point in the movie into the spider-verse is anyone can wear the mask and this game really really hammers that home is anyone can be a hero and one of the things i loved about marvel spider-man was the sort of the um the breaking of expectation with making spider-man out of college and he is older and it's not a story that we usually get with peter parker but, you know, the high school trying to do the duality of being Spider-Man and also having a life, they get that with Miles now. And I think that it's like you have this perfect... The insomniac world for Spider-Man is so cool because it's like you get to have the best of both worlds. You get to have the Spider-Man who's struggling to do school and be Spider-Man at the same time. And then you also get the Spider-Man who's trying to be an adult and, like, trying to learn what that means. And I just... I really can't wait to see what they do in like the proper sequel and i think this is really setting the stage for switching characters switching perspectives and adding more of the spider family which i just the the idea of what they could do next is really exciting can we get a spider gwen game 
That is Please, my exact possible. next thought. I was gonna say I mean, Spider Pig, but look at some Spider Man. Spider Man Noir, Spider Man twenty ninety nine. Bring them the, all. The into the, so I pre-ordered the Ultimate Edition because I'm a sucker for anything Spider Man. Yes, I played through a lot of that game with the Into the Spider Verse suit. Yep, I played through it with the twenty or the twelve frame per second mod enabled. How good does that thing? Like, oh just, my god! I almost cried. I, <laughs> I did cry that the first time in, in performance mode. The way that it ran, I I was nearly in tears. I, I I fully I did cry, and oh my god! There's 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 like some moments where the we'll like, keep the spoiler to, free. Yeah, we'll the spoiler no free. spoilers. I will say the soundtrack is phenomenal, and there's points where the soundtrack really helps push the emotions that much forward and there's a very specific moment early on where i fully was in tears swinging around as spider-man yep. and i had the into the spider-verse skin on the whole time and just it it is a really special game and i think just that's all i can say is it's just it's really special and i loved every second of it and i can't wait to platinum it i'm slowly making my way through it but i'm also trying to play every other game that i bought because i bought way too fucking many yeah. just play miles <laughs> do what i did i platinum astro i platinum miles and i'm happier for it mm. <laughs> yeah i i platinumed i platinumed bug snacks and then i platinumed uh uh astro and I, i'm like Picking through Demon Souls, I'm it, I'm I'm playing all of the games that are like my palate cleansers for Demon Souls. Like <laughs> yeah. if I if I'm just if I strictly just play Demon Souls, I'm gonna lose my fucking mind. So right. <laughs> and I'm going to love myself. So all the other games I'm calling palate cleansers. So <laughs> so I have Sackboy, a big adventure. I'm gonna play that next. I'm excited to play it. Um, mm. I I kind of hate that how how some games like I know with Sackboy to get the platinum you're gonna have to play co-op at least yeah. for at least two of those trophies i hate i hate when i hate games that lock platinum trophies behind online play and mm -hmm. co-op especially online play because it's like what if the servers go down then it's like yeah. oh well yeah. I, like if you want to play like i think doesn't resistance require online multiplayer trophies like i was like well yeah. I, the servers are closed for that so i was like i can't even platinum resistance now if i wanted to play the game can, <laughs> so i was like i we, hate when they do that can we talk about that for a second um obviously most of us is platinum astro right mm-hmm I think I'm the only one who hasn't. Okay. You, you've got to be close. Yep, you're the only one. You have to be close because I feel like in your first playthrough, you kind of just, even when you're just like fucking around in the game, you just kind of unlock a trophy, which is literally yeah. how yeah. I unlock like a majority of those trophies. I yeah, just I'm sure. Around, I'm, like, oh, got a trophy. The moment, sure the moment you start the game, you're automatically close. So <laughs> you're, you're at least within like three hours of finishing the platinum yeah. when you start it for the first time. Yeah. So, question: Why are there three separate trophies for Astrobot? And because one of them is a speed running trophy, which I really liked, um, but the other two trophies um, that exist seemed like they could have been built into the regular trophy list. I think it was nope. more so just so that those trophies didn't keep you from getting the platinum, which I actually but kind of appreciated. I they didn't seem like didn't anything that would keep people from the platinum. Like there was one trophy I think you get where it's like you literally yeah you cleared the game you beat the game and it's like that's not even part of the trophies to get the platinum and I was like I don't know why that wasn't part of the trophy to get the platinum because I was like yeah. it, you you have to you get it when you complete the story like this is literally a story yeah. trophy so the you three trophies never seen that before right? the three trophies in question are play as no limits clear the game and got the new generation artifacts which are the PlayStation Four and uh, PlayStation Five and its accessories run as for run got a total speed run time of seven minutes or under and gravity days which is make the CPU chip punch the glass sphere sending at least ten bots flying. Uh, which I, I don't get that one either because like that one is very easy to it, it requires a slight yeah. bit of puzzle solving of figuring out how to do that but once you get it it's like I don't see why they couldn't include that in the main game maybe the mm -hmm. last two were tied to like late late additions to the game like we're not seeing them come through as like patched in so to speak but maybe that functionality like maybe the speed running wasn't there or, or wasn't initially planned for day one and they were able to get it out I, I don't know but the speed running is yeah. great it was, I was very confused by it. it. It threw me off. I was like, okay, maybe not. I can see maybe not the, the speed running one, maybe not being part of like platinum, but the beating the game and even the the other one with the CPU bot. Like I've, I was like, you could have put, I, I don't know. I felt like they could have put those in there. And I feel like that still wouldn't take away from this being one of the easier games to get a platinum in. 
I'm just surprised yeah. those were separated. Maybe you're right that yeah. they're a late edition um, being put in because uh, none of them were like too hard. Like the speed running trophy, I'm down to like it's under seven minutes. I think I'm down to like five minutes and 47 seconds on my total time. Well, I got that trophy the first time clearing each of the speed runs because you only have like there's eight of them. So you have to be like, what? 50 under a minute, in. maybe around 45 seconds on each and you clear it without oh much God, issue. Yeah. So Greg Miller of kind of funny actually made a very important point with regards to the speed running trophy, which is that, you know, I think we kind of sometimes ignore the fact that there are a huge amount of people that don't particularly care for speed running in games or don't particularly care for multiplayer in games or any of these sorts of things that are viewed as kind of like extra to the main experience. And I think that them relegating the speed running trophy to the DLC trophy pack one kind of bubble that the other two trophies are inside of is basically the developer's way of being like, you don't have to bother with this if speed running is not really your speed. Well, and that was kind of my, so like, I want to segue that into, is there a situation where we see multiplayer trophies done like this? I mean, I they, hope so. I hope so back in the, back in the day, there were like a sporadic few trophy lists that did that. Like for example, the one I, the, distinctive one i remember was kill zone three that one split up its trophies into a single player pack and a multiplayer pack and that was during the playstation 3 era so i think it's like i I totally wish that we see more of that going forward but the fact that it didn't catch on immediately back during that era makes me feel a little bit doubtful I mean, it's also another issue, too, because it's like, even when, like, if some people decide they want to play, like, let's say an older Battlefield game or something, it's it'd be almost virtually hard to play, like, because, you know, with Call of Duty and, like, Battlefield, there's such a herd mentality of, oh, a new one just got announced, I gotta buy this year's game or else I'm not gonna have anybody to play with, like, I, I just feel that, because it's, it's one of the main reasons why there's games like The Last of Us I have yet to play them, because it's like, one, I don't like the multiplayer for The Last of Us, I know some people do, I don't like it, but it's just so hard for me to try to find a match on there. And it's like, it, I, it's not worth my time to just go through all that, which is why it, like, I didn't get the platinum in that game. And one of the things that's stopping me is from getting it. It's literally the multiplayer aspect. Uh, and then, uh, so I, I just feel like at some point they need to kind of just double down on the fact like, look, we'll have the trophies for multiplayer if that's something you like to play, but we're not going to make that a requirement. I don't think the game should have to make that a requirement. I also concur with the speed run thing. Like some people, they play the game once and then they're done. And maybe if they're close to getting the platinum, they'll go back and do whatever they need to do. But I feel like putting those type of putting difficulty level trophies, putting speed run type trophies or time trial trophies or multiplayer trophies, I feel hinders people from wanting to platinum games in my opinion i know some people will go through it don't get me wrong but i just feel like it's very intimidating yeah the other, thing I, the, the other thing I could add to this is maybe not something we're all thinking of but something that is front of mind is not everyone has the dexterity like is physically able to complete those speed run levels or complete it in the time required to get the trophy so by separating it out as in the similar way to maybe if you have social anxiety and don't want to play multiplayer games separating those out into their own separate lists and not gatekeeping the platinum trophy behind achieving those makes that trophy more accessible it's not necessarily yeah. easier albeit like some of these challenges are difficult for people and definitely those who aren't as physically able to complete the tro- like the the speed runs in time uh, but it makes that that ultimate goal of the platinum more accessible, and I think that's a good trend to move towards. Uh, I do want to just issue a quick correction. You actually do had to, you did have to play a couple of multiplayer matches in Killzone Three to get the platinum in that game. I apologize for making a grievous error such as that. How well, and dare you, Cozy? I don't mind tr- platinum or trophies where it like gets you to test an online mode, but there's no skill based requirement. Watch Dogs Two did that where it just you got trophies for playing one or two of the different modes um and then that's all you needed to needed to do hey, um, I, I know with like dead rising 2 for example they do so, they did something like that too i think you did have to win a i i can't remember i don't have the trophy list off the top of my head but i know there was like one i think it's like you just had to win uh, one of the trophies or achievements was win an online match in dead rising 2 i was like oh that that, that should be easy yeah. enough like I mean, if you play it enough times, eventually you gotta win. Yeah. <laughs> but, no, the problem like, with that is eventually there will be no one playing that game because it's not like point. it's not a game that people are going to be continuously going back to the multiplayer for. But as yeah. well, you, it sh- 
wouldn't be the hard. It, it's a kind of a you know double edged thing of it's probably not the hardest thing to get like you know three friends on to just be like hey all of us just uh, all of us look for a match at the same time and we'll probably get cute with each other. I mean, a, another thing to think about from that perspective as well is by adding multiplayer trophies at least on the Xbox or the PlayStation, uh, you're gatekeeping that behind a paywall. Because yes. I know all of us are in a situation where you just either let our PlayStation Plus renew or we find deals and, and add to yeah. that. But not everyone is in a financial situation where they can do that. And by making those trophies inaccessible to those who don't pay for online access, you're again going to dissuade people from either playing your game or making an honest effort at completing these things if that's something they want to do. There, There's also another, another type of uh, trophy slash achievement that I wanted to bring up there. Uh, because not everybody has necessarily the time to invest in 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 a game that where a trophy may take a, a significant amount of time and overlapping with like the multiplayer trophies there if you think back to uh, gears of war they have the seriously oh, achievement yeah which uh, i believe the first gears of war you had to get 10,000 online multiplayer kills um, and then Gears Two, they d they made it a hundred thousand, and they but it could be AIs as well. It could be AIs as well, uh, which was nice. But you know, I I I never got any of those because I didn't play enough of it. So you know, it takes it, a serious time commitment to get that. Yeah, absolutely. Speaking of time commitment, we are. Uh, it is currently nine thirty, and typically there is about a uh, half hour left in the show. Um, so, hmm, I we we haven't spoken about bug snacks yet. That's a good point. Who, who wants to be talking about bug snacks? Uh, uh, it, like what you did. Uh, I've got uh, about an hour uh, in into the game. We did talk a little bit about in the beginning. Taylor was talking about bug snacks a little bit. Yeah, I mean, it, it was brought up, brought up briefly, but like. <laughs> Can we, we didn't talk in, about bug snacks. Go a little bit more in depth to what is bug snacks because I've only without seen spoiling. The, yeah, without spoiling because I've literally only seen the first trailer and I've listened to the song on Spotify. I have it downloaded. I just haven't touched it yet. Please, why should I play bug snacks? Okay, so um, it, I, I, <laughs> so think of it like Pokemon mixed with like I don't know, like Ape Escape. That's bug snacks. So you play as this like journalist. Well, yeah, you play as a I'm, journalist. I'm gonna go who... play. I heard Pokemon. I'm out. You guys have fun. <laughs> I mean, seriously, like, well, I mean, because like literally the, the 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 bug snacks. They literally like if you pet like the strawberry looking thing and they, it's called a strawby, strawby. and it'll say it'll say strawby. strawby. Yeah, it's the cutest thing. I was like, kind of like yeah. what Pokemon do. They say their names of whatever it is they bunger, are. Bunger, like, bunger, 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 bunger. Bunger yeah. is my favorite. They're so cute. <laughs> <laughs> and you play as a you play as a journalist, and uh, it was so it was funny because a lot of people were like, "What the hell are these things in the game?" I was like, "They're called grumpuses," <laughs> but <laughs> they kind of look like walruses to me. <laughs> a bit of a walrus, but, bit of a bear. It's yeah, it's a walrus, they're confusing. Otter, bear. They they it's Something. some type of cre or just like creature. You, creature. Yeah, so you're 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 a journalist, and this explorer chick. It, uh, tells you to come to this snack tooth island because she has discovered this creature, this new discovery of bug snacks, which are half bug and half snack. And you get to the island and you find out she's missing. So basically your goal in the game, like there's kind of technically two goals where it's like you have to bring the villagers back to the to, to uh, Snacksburg to, to stay there. But then you also have to find the the person who brought you there in the first place because she's literally missing for like pretty much the entire game until until the, until the end and it's it's like it's a little bit of like a like a platformer kind of ex like puzzle type game so yeah. what i really liked about it was i like that i know that like there's just some things where it's like you have to do a certain way to catch a bug snack but i like how almost all of them have kind of like a few different ways of like, Hmm, how can I figure out how to catch this book? Cause it's like, you really have to get creative with the tools you have. And then there's like yeah. some things where it's like you, you don't necessarily have the right tools that you like, you have some of the tools, but not all of them. And then sometimes it's like, if you don't have the normal way to catch it, you can get a little creative with how you catch. Like, <laughs> like it, there's just so many different traps and like methods and strategies that you can do to try to catch so, these bugs next. Yes. Yeah, so, okay. So what, uh, I, I have played Bug Snacks uh, because it is available on the PC on the Epic Game Store. 
Um, and uh, just one of the early, so you start off, uh, you know, you can catch a strawby and it teaches you how to use a trap and you just, you, you see the path that the strawby is walking. If you get too close, it's going to run away from you. Yeah. Um, so you put the trap down, you walk away and you hide. And then eventually the, the strawby will come out and um, walk within range of the trap. You press a button and the trap fires. You've, you've caught the strawby. You can take the strawby and feed it to the other grumpuses on the island, and their body parts uh, horrifyingly turn into yeah. uh, images of these bug snacks, um, as you may have seen in in some of the trailers. There, um, as as you progress, you know you you unlock different tools to to play, uh, not to play uh, to Catch to them. try and catch uh, uh, the bug snacks, and uh, one so one of them. Uh, the the very next thing that you unlock is a slingshot and there are these ketchup plants so you have to you know you 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 restock your your ketchup supply by the uh plants that are growing nearby and you have to uh use your slingshot and you just sort of like lead a bunger into a a, a pen uh and you catch it for somebody else so that it stops destroying their crops or whatever um this uh you have to try you you need to try and catch these other bungers right and there's uh the the problem is if you get too close to the bunger they're gonna hit you and they're gonna throw you up in the air um so you have to try and get one bunger lead one bunger with the the slingshot catch up over to another bunger and then you gotta your your last shot you gotta catch up the, the second bunger so that the f the first bunger you let you let over can run into the other bunger and uh, i'm speaking a lot of nonsense right now but trust me it makes sense there is a puzzle to it <laughs> it makes sense to me <laughs> it, yeah, yep. catch up no, and bungers it. it's yeah it's and you know yeah and then when you unlock more like stuff too you can actually you don't even need to ram two bungers into each other and like like yeah. there's just so many different ways that you can catch these bug snacks like i know when i the first time like before i kind of realized oh you can like you get this like you get the trap that's like one of the first things you get and i remember there's like these friders they're just basically spider french fries mm -hmm. and they like catch up and it's like they're on the ceiling so obviously you can't jump up and catch them but you can draw you, you can lure them to the, the trap on the floor put the trap and on use the, the floor ketchup. Yeah, yeah, and before I used to make little trails to catch up, but then I realized if I put the trap close enough to the friders, you can put ketchup on the trap and they will still go into the trap and then you could and then you just get your trap ready and then bam. Like <laughs> like there's but or you could just literally just make a trail of ketchup and then lead them to the trap or you could just splat the ket like the trap with ketchup. Like like there's just so, there's so much like there's it's just so crazy how like creative you can get. And then there's this one device you can get where it's like a little straw bee in like a little ball and you have to like uh can, like help it navigate around using like a laser pointer and i remember there was like this other trap that i that i used too and whenever i tried to like um try to make a like a like a bungee cord so to speak to try to trip up some bug snacks sometimes i just use that instead of having to use like a rock or a tree or something i was like like there's just so many different like there's so many different ways that you can catch a bug snack where it's like it, it, it definitely rewards you for your creativity and i think that's it's it's such a stupidly fun thing that i i i love it so much about it for that reason and and again the bug snacks are cute they're adorable they are they um are. you seem so, so excited about something that sounds so bizarre to anyone who comes into this conversation after way through have you ever yeah, listened the, to somebody talk about pokemon yeah i, love I talk about pokemon week, all yeah. the time pokemon's great uh, every week. <laughs> yeah nathan um what about the question the reggie's and yeah, when, when this game was first announced, uh, Young Horses, the developer behind this game, mentioned that two of their influences on this game's design were, I believe, Dark Cloud and Bioshock. And I feel like that led to a lot of speculation amongst people that, oh, this game has this seemingly benign exterior, but it actually has like a deep, dark interior and is actually like secretly like a really messed up game obviously it's a very hey, look, quirky I the experience game, i can't say what it is you have to okay. play the game because if i, no if I say what, thank you no, like like i will say i i see that bioshock vibe to it like the the inspirations that they said they have like i i totally get it but trust me i i cannot say anything about that without getting into spoiler territory but okay. I, trust and believe it, it, it it's it's in there 
All right. Just trust okay. me. <laughs> okay. I, I, I have heard on multiple other podcasts and whatnot that it is absolutely worth seeing uh, to the end for sure. Yes. Yeah, mm. like I, I, the game. I will say, as much as I love the the gameplay, it do, it can get pretty comp- repetitive very quickly. But if there's one thing that I felt kept me kind of like aside, I mean, aside from the fact I really like the game, but like I feel like if there's one thing that can try to that I feel should motivate people to beat the game if they feel like it's getting too repetitive, is I think the characters in the game are really great. Like I would die for Philbo. He's great. He's goofy. He's very klutzy guy and and uh all the characters are and like especially like if you do the side quest and you get to learn more about some of these and like these npcs it's like like you feel a little bit i don't want to say too emotionally attached because like but i guess you could like i i felt really a part of these like grumpus's lives and i liked to see how their like arcs would conclude and like things like that and then like just it's it's and then there's just like the story itself the story and the characters uh, i feel like are some of the best parts of the game aside from the cute little bug snacks and getting to pet the bug snacks so (laughs) but yes um i I can't spoil the story you have to play the story it's i'm just gonna say i didn't i did not expect it to end the way it did but definitely play it and then come back to me and let me know how you thought of the story because i was i just had a wtf at the end i was like I'll, what I'll shoot, I'll shoot you a dm once i finish the game and we'll be able to okay. talk yeah about we'll, snack we'll, stuff. we will definitely I've talk to, about oh, it for sure now. i have to finish sack boy first uh, that's got to okay. be my priority and then i yeah, get to back to bug snacks yeah one, one last do, and then one last snacks, I'm sure one last quick thing about bug snacks is that you, you meant taylor you mentioned like the characters and everything it's got a pretty good um, voice cast behind all the Grumpuses. Like, your uh, Lowenthal is in it. Um, Sam Regal from Critical Role is, uh, plays a character in it. Um, you've got Barbara Goodson, who I believe is Rita Repulsa. If I maybe really, I, really, yeah, some wow. somebody, yeah, <laughs> somebody, oh. yeah, some, yeah, she does yeah. so. She did the. I guess. I guess what she did is the voice for Rita Repulsa in the dub for Power Rangers. I was oh, going to say, yeah, the, act, voice, the actor yeah, was the, still actress, the original Japanese actor. Yeah, um, yeah, and yeah, it, it's got it's got a pretty big big list of names there, uh, for sure. Um, but yeah, so that that probably adds to it. Anybody have any other thoughts about Bug Snacks or? And we just I got it sounds it. like I need to play it. Yeah, exactly. I need to play it. Yeah, I'm it's, talking about it's free. Yes, plus go play it's, it. It's free if you have. If you have, a, yeah, it's free on PlayStation Plus. Like literally, you're not losing. Like if you like, you know, if you have a PS5, just add it free. to your account. Say, even, and yeah, be it, it, even if even you if you don't have it. a PS5, just yeah. add it. Just add, I did, and I still bought it on PC because I don't have a PS5, and I added it for free there because I might play it again. Who knows? I mean, I mean you'll, you'll get a PS5 in time for Destruction All Stars in February, right? Maybe I don't yeah, know. That was the thing that he was waiting for. <laughs> it was, yeah, it, it, yeah. Well, and by yeah, then we should have out. the next gen version of Avengers. Like, yeah. it's going to be a pretty good I, first few years of 2020 or months of 2020. Yeah, I, I was um, waiting to get an Xbox for Halo, and I was waiting for Destruction All Stars for a PS5. So it makes perfect sense. Not Avengers. Those seem like equivalents. Yeah, yeah. absolutely on par. What about Avengers. Yeah. Yeah, I just um, we don't say the just, A word yeah. anymore. But, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, Bug Sax is just a fun game. Like, I I know some people are like, oh, this game looks silly, or oh, it looks like it's a kid's game and all this stuff. I was like, okay, you know what? Don't put that. Don't don't have that type of attitude going into the game. Just go into this. Game man, could be a kid's game for all you care, right? <laughs> I like, mean, look, I mean, but listen, if it. you saw that announcement trailer, like, you should have known what kind of game this was gonna be. It's gonna be a very fun and goofy game. Like, literally, the guy at the end was like, "I was trying to hold a lamp with my weedy hands." Like, you already knew they were gonna have some stupid shit that was gonna make you laugh. Like, come on. Like, <laughs> oh, <laughs> and you saw we looked. He had like a fucking cinnamon bun, like nose or something. And then he had like these hot dog hands. Like, I was like, you should. Her hand turned into a curly fry like come on you knew this game was not going to take itself seriously and that's what's great about the game is like it's not taking itself seriously but that's what makes it fun <laughs> i think I mean, if, if people... cozy hadn't convinced me to play apex tonight somehow i'd be playing bug snacks tonight so thanks cozy yeah no problem <laughs> 
speaking of which, uh, I actually have been playing a fair bit of Apex on my PlayStation 5. Uh, it's still the PlayStation 4 <laughs> release of it. Uh, and there's really not too much to talk about. I, I can hear everybody grumbling because I talk about Apex a lot on this podcast. Uh, its frame rate is through the roof now, thanks to the PlayStation 5's extra processing power. Uh, but I mean, it's still the same old experience, which obviously is great because the same old experience of Apex is a great experience. Uh, which, I mean, I feel like this is kind of a good transition point to talking about some of the other games we've been playing on the PlayStation 5. Yeah, go for it. Uh, I mean, outside of Apex, I also played a little bit of Kingdom Hearts uh, Melody of Memory. Or maybe it's Memory Alex, of Melody. Alex, any thoughts on that? Yeah, Alex. Oh, we just lost we, Alex. We, we've some been crazy waiting. name that, that, that Tetsuya Nomura was like, yeah, let's just make this a really crazy name because fuck it. <laughs> Alex, we're still waiting for your thoughts on this game. How I, you know... Get back to me in 2021. The, the funny What's thing about when we actually get into Kingdom, Heart Kingdom Hearts. What? I'm sorry. Two people talked at the same time. I have no idea what was said. <laughs> Play Kingdom Hearts, you coward. Uh, it, the I, funny... uh, it's all on Game Pass. Oh, it's literally right. all of them. You but, could do it. Is I real could. It, yeah, uh, so you know what I do? <laughs> Oh, not you know what I just that. realized? Yeah. I, I did a quick search, and um, I, anyone who's played Bug's Eyes, like, Wambus, the character Wambus, he, uh, the, his voice actor also voiced Soldier 76 in Overwatch, and I just think that's, oh. like, because the, the character he voices in Bug's Eyes is very much now, a country guy. He's the farmer that farms sauces, like... Now Cozy's in. Hell yeah. Cozy's yeah. all in now. I, I, yeah, Overwatch is what it's like. Got yeah, Over, Overwatch, a game I've never played. <laughs> Definitely... <laughs> Uh, I do want to say quickly with regards to Kingdom Hearts, it's um, a surprisingly uh, good game so far. The thing about this that is really surprising is typically with the Kingdom Hearts series, I'm used to loading up the game and then watching a you know 20 minute engrossing cutscene about the state of the Kingdom Hearts world before getting into any proper gameplay. This game straight up like five seconds into the game starts up with gameplay because the opening music video to the game allows you to like actually play it as you play most of the other levels in the game and then from there it's immediately into a tutorial and you're immediately into levels you only get your first bit of story content like i'd say five levels into the game and even then all it is is basically Kyrie, one of the leading females of the series talking about basically the events of the past games over footage of the past games we, we there's no like Dude. new story content yet at all and it's it's really weird again as somebody who is so used to the kingdom Hearts series being so perhaps too story rich uh but I'm enjoying it quite a bit despite that. The rhythm gameplay of it, it requires a bit of an adjustment, but I feel myself getting better the more and more I play it. Did they release a Keyblade guitar peripheral from Mad Cats with this? Mm, I don't even think that Mad Cats is still around. I, I'm no, they sure are. They are? They definitely are. Yeah, they yeah, are. They no, came they, back a few they years They almost ago. closed. But are, yeah, weren't they, they came publishing back. games at one point? Um, yeah, so... <laughs> GameStop? I don't know. Yeah, they technically came back January fourth, uh, twenty eighteen. Um, but yeah, so they've been around for like a little bit. Um, yeah. Um, I know they now like yeah. I haven't really heard a whole lot about Mad Cats now that I think about Looks it. Looks like, like they're doing mice, keyboards, arcade yeah. sticks kind of deal. But okay, kind of like what they were doing. But I know they also did like a whole bunch of console focused third party stuff. I had this like yeah. one GameCube controller from them. It was really good. Everyone <laughs> had a janky Mad Cats controller that your sister ended up using when you played. So she brother. wondered why she wasn't. Really I actually good at preferred them. the Mad Cats controller. Too, <laughs> yeah. like, crazy the, the, person. No, no, the GameCube okay. one. No, the GameCube one. I don't know. I, I think it was just like the the maybe the rubber grips or whatever. I thought I I don't know. I don't know. I liked. The field, I don't know. It's so, I don't know how to, you need to, I, I, listen, you got to hear my whole thought process of like how I play certain genres on certain controllers and certain game pad. Like, it's a really, I, I remember I explained it to someone once and they're like, that is the craziest thing you've ever told me in your life, Taylor. And I was like, I feel like I we'll know. have to have you back for a one on one episode to tell us all about <laughs> your weird gaming. <laughs> Resident the, Evil with the chainsaw com the controller, that would be an experience. The Mad Cats <laughs> controllers definitely got better as they went on. I'll say that until they went yeah. up. 
Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. And so came back. the first time, that point, they had the Mad reputation. Cat, so this is per Wikipedia. Mad Cats apparently ceased operations in March of 2017. And then in January of 2018, Mad Cats Global Limited, which is a new company that was headquartered in Kowloon, Hong Kong, uh, that basically obtained ownership of the previous Mad Cats trademarks, announced that they were coming back and announced a whole bunch of new Mad Cats products at CES. So they're back, but like under a different form, guys, body, soul, etc. Yeah, definitely more. And they're back to the extent that someone bought the brand. Yeah, oh, this is like uh-huh. THQ Nordic. Yeah, yeah, it's a just, yeah. yeah it's there back we go. Hmm. All right. Yeah, I just decided to look at some of their stuff, and I was like, you know, <laughs> We're all I don't think I'd Mad buy Cats this now. stuff, but I, I kind of like the design. Not, not enough to buy it. Yeah, I, yeah, it's unorthodox, kind of like the Alienware stuff, <laughs> like the Alienware PC Just gaming. The Alienware stuff. in general. Uh, mm-hmm. yeah, one that more too. game <laughs> that I want to talk yeah. about that I've been playing on the PlayStation Five is a little PlayStation Four game by the name of My Name Is Mayo. Excellent. So, <laughs> wait, the original uh, or the sequel? This is uh, the sequel. My Name Is Mayo Two. Huh. Yeah, I should have specified okay. that. So the thing about My Name is Mayo is, in case you don't know, it's a very easy platinum game where you tap on a mayo jar and learn about the mayo jar's various exploits and experiences in life. Uh, My Name is Mayo 2 it's is largely more the same. Yeah, very engrossing and also gross stories occasionally. Uh, My Name is Mayo 2 is interesting in that one of the story paths in the game actually has Does you keep playing shit? Uh, yes a bunch of mini games that take the grossing and engrossing factor of the game up to another notch as you can see right here i'm in the middle of a mini game where i basically have to throw shit at the mayo jar to cause it to tap it's um for anyone who's made it this far into the podcast i want to personally apologize for the fact that cozy <laughs> brought up my name is mayo too well can I, I bring up next? I week? don't apologize at all it tonight and play it. You don't have to. I will. Page right it, now, it's like it's two bucks. It's less than that. Yeah. It's like a dollar fifty. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. AJ, like, well, oh yeah. It's yeah. It's a dollar nineteen. Up, please. Okay. Okay. I'll yeah. We're, we're getting, we, yeah. Uh, yeah. We're getting a little distracted now by the monkey flinging shit. Um. All right. Um. <laughs> Is there, is there spank the monkey? Yeah, it's oh man, that's a cla- that takes me back. Wow. Oh yeah. Um, is there any f- closing thoughts that you have? Your hopes for the future in terms of PlayStation? I'm I'm gonna go through everybody one at a time, uh, and and just just yeah, like like we did off the top. Give me your closing thoughts and let let's hope. Let, let's be hopeful for the future and let's let let's just give our closing thoughts on let's be hopeful hope for the future go. in general and not just for the playstation and 5. Lot, lots of yeah in in general uh <laughs> for the planet uh for america especially yes. <laughs> right now in these trying don't, times don't forget about um, canada yeah yeah we yeah we need to help our when blame canada. brother out <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh mitch uh PS5, um, closing thoughts. What do you hope for the future? We're off to a great start. Controller's great. Thank God the store is functional. They still have some work to do with the OS. Yes, I have heard this. Nathan. That's it. Uh, Very similar uh, to Mitch. I think it's a really good step forward. I think there's some fine-tuning the OS that needs to happen. The controller is wicked. I think this is probably the best launch lineup that's ever come out for a console. Um, there's no specific one like enormous launch game, but everything is doing well right across the board. Um, it's very solid. And then what we've got coming within the next year is even just icing on the cake. Chef's kiss. Can't wait to talk about this after a full year on the market. Absolutely. Absolutely. Taylor. Bug snacks. I'm kidding. No. <laughs> I, I, oh. <laughs> a lot of, um, a lot of potential off to a great start already. And we're only what a weekend uh i think i'm I'm really curious to see what they're going to do with ssd expansion because sony hasn't really detailed how they're going to do that with upgrading it internally and how they're going to handle external ssd 
Uh, and again, I feel like just like storage space is going to be a big problem with this generation because of just like how big these file sizes are and like all the cool hardware stuff that like comes with these games now. But PS5, the DualSense is one of the most innovative controllers that's come out in a long time. I'm curious to see how third party developers are really going to take advantage of this of the haptic feedback technologies the exclusives i'm pretty happy with so far i can't wait to see what ratchet and clank is all about because that's like mm-hmm. personally my personal like highly anticipated game for next year yep uh but I'm, I'm excited i i i'm excited to see what the future holds for the playstation 5 i i feel very confident that it's going to have a very long lifespan um and again i just really want to know how they're going to just handle storage expense because like Seriously, what's what's going to, what's going on, what's going on here? <laughs> Sorry, can I just say one thing before you get to the next uh, participant yeah. in this? Um, yeah, go for it. So I was playing Miles, and I finished a side mission, and a cop car drove up to the crime scene and ran someone over, and that was weird. Hmm. Uh, hmm. That okay. sounds like actual cops in the states. Yeah, those are the cops <laughs> I'm familiar with. I just needed to tell that story. I'm sorry. Please continue. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Alex, let's hear from you. Uh, the PlayStation 5 is a phenomenal piece of hardware that I am, every time I boot it up, I just am so, like, surprised by it. I'm still not used to the fact that Miles Morales loads within not even 30 seconds. Like, from when I press play on the PlayStation Start menu to actually swinging around is not even 30 seconds. It's insane. I'm we didn't still... We talk about how crazy fast travel is in that game. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's literally instant. Um, here's the thing, is the reason I bought a PlayStation 4 was because of Sony First Party Studios. The reason I bought a PlayStation 5 was because what Sony First Party Studios are going to do. I can't wait to see what the future holds for these studios because they are... Without a doubt, some of the best developers working full stop. And goddamn, show me what God of War Ragnarok looks like. I need to know what that game looks like. I'm holding up my (laughs) Leviathan Axe tattoo because I, God of War is, I've been thinking about this more and more. God of War is at least in my top two favorite games of all time. The more I think about it, the more it, almost could be number one i feel like it's going to interchange with halo 3 like if you ask me on whatever day of the week i just i love that game so much and i can't wait to see what they do next i thought the axe was called a keyblade the future of i'm just going to ignore that the future of (laughs) the future of the playstation 5 is really strong and show me what naughty dog is going to do we've already seen what one of the insomniac studios can do show me what gorilla can do show me what um uh, sucker punch show me what they can all do because they have so much potential with this piece of hardware and the controller as well cozy I mean, I echo a lot of what has already been said. I think that the lineup of games thus far was is great. I think that the lineup of games that is yet to come is looking really great. I think that the controller is great as well. And I just think that Sony needs to spend a little bit of time tinkering away and reworking the PlayStation 5's UI. Uh, one thing I didn't bring up that I, I don't know if you would really call this a UI thing, but I was a little disappointed to discover last week that when you're in a voice chat with other people, you can't configure it so that the voice chat audio goes through your TV speakers. I have a specific audio thing set up where basically I connect a 3.5 millimeter audio cable from the monitor that my video games are being played into into my PC and then from there uh, via voice from your banana into the headphones I'm currently wearing and basically I got into an online session with some friends last week and I was unable to hear them through that setup I could only hear them by basically listening to them through the little speaker on the controller so I, I don't know necessarily if that specific issue will be rectified, but it's a little bit disappointing because that was not an issue on the PlayStation 4 before this. And I'm hoping that Sony will kind of take the time to listen to our little critiques here and there and act on them. Amazing. Uh, yeah, no, um, hearing all you guys uh, talk about the PS5 and whatnot, I definitely am getting... A, a strong case of FOMO, um, not having one. Um, I definitely need to get my hands on that controller at some point. Um, every, as long you know, as you mask I, up and you sanitize, you're welcome in my apartment anytime. Uh, oh, thank you very much. I appreciate it. 
Um, yeah, the, uh, I, I listen to a lot of podcasts while I'm at work and whatnot. Um, and, and yeah, the, there's definitely a lot of the UI, uh, issues that I've heard about. Um, and I, I've seen videos of it working or not quite working the way you, you would intuitively expect it to, uh, that, that could have anything to do from either they just completely missed it or, you know, COVID got in the way and work working from home got in the way and they were not able to quite tighten some of those, those aspects up. And, you know, hmm. everybody's going through it right now. Um, we're about to potentially go into another lockdown at the end of this week, uh, ourselves cause yeah. second wave spiking, you know, where we may be in, in Canada and, you know, we may be better off than some other places in the world right now, but you know, we're we're not doing good ourselves here. Let's let's better than not. worse doesn't make it safe. Nope, does not make it yeah. does not make it's, it okay. And it's not a competition. For sure. Let's no, put it that way. Not a comp. It's it's a competition to get better. Maybe. Sure. Maybe. Ideally. <laughs> maybe. Anyway, um, yeah. Thank thank you to uh, everyone for tuning in to this episode of Press YYZ. If you enjoyed what you heard here, be sure to check us out on Twitch. Rate, review us on Apple Podcasts. Give us a follow on our Twitter account, at Press YYZ, which we will keep you up to date when we go live, post new episodes, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Of course, you can also find the rest of the crew on social media. Mr. Mitch George, is that where people can find you on the social media? They can find me on the social media. Yeah. Mr. Mitch George everywhere. Twitter, Instagram, Twitch. I'm going to be playing Apex tonight with Cozy and Alex. Probably That's getting correct. Snacks this weekend. Uh, looking forward to that. Appreciate everyone for coming along on this journey. But yeah, Mr. Mitch George, MR Mitch George, anywhere you find people. Cozy? Yeah, of course. You can always find me on Twitter at Alex Kazina and on Twitch at twitch.tv slash Cozy Bear Live. As Mitch previously hinted at multiple times, we are going to be playing Apex together tonight. This is going to be the first in a series in which I'm going to be educating Mitch and Alex Ballant on the ways of Apex Legends. So if you have been meaning to see us all give Respawn Entertainment's Battle Royale a shot together, be sure to tune in. Yeah, we'll see if the series lasts more than one episode. I hope it will. (laughs) I I think that you'll be fully indoctrinated into Kings Canyon and Olympus and the many delights of the world of Apex by the end of the night. Those are definitely words. (laughs) He said some words, that's for sure. Alex, where can people find you? Uh, On Instagram, I am blatantly Alex, and on Twitter, I am blatantly underscore Alex. All right, Nathan? Uh, follow me at the underscore uh, nmac. Uh, I'm too tired tonight for some reason. Um, but check out my <laughs> reviews. At, yeah, uh, check out my reviews at ps4blog.net, uh, where I'll have a review of Warhammer Chaos. Chaos Bane. Bane. Yeah, Chaos Bane's uh, coming out for PS5, as well as I'm working on my Sackboy review uh, code provided by Sony. So. Um, Hopefully I'll have that to talk about in the near future as well. Once I'm more into it. Great. Taylor, thank you so much for, for joining us tonight. It, it's been an, an absolute pleasure to have you here. You've provided some uh, amazingly insightful feedback that, that, you know, our, our not very uh, diverse uh, group of dudes up here uh, North of the what? border um, can necessarily uh, contribute to. So, uh, is it's been it's been great to have you. How can people uh, keep up with you? Uh, yeah, you can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Tay Nixter. That's T A Y N I X S T E R. Uh, as I mentioned earlier in the episode, I am a journalist. Uh, so if you want to keep up to date with me professionally, you can find all my work at TheVerge.com. All right. I have been your host, AJ Fraser. Uh, You can find me all over the internet at Times Hero, capital T, capital H. Uh, And yeah, with that, I I guess that'll do it. Uh, Until next time, thank you for playing. Take care, guys. Thank you for playing. Spike your hair. And wear a mask. (laughs) Yeah, you spike your hair, Nate.